So this is a subcutaneous back mass, 12 centimeters, in a middle-aged um, woman. MDM2 uh, amplification by fish was negative. And here's what we have. So clearly, this is a large tumor, right? We have multiple pieces you know, representing different samples from different areas of the tumor. And you can see it's pretty heterogeneous. You have areas like this that are clearly mature fat with a lot of dense collagen, very sclerotic collagen. Areas like this are less fatty and appear to be more spindled, maybe more myxoid. There's something in there that's replacing the fat. I'll show you a few others from low power just to show the heterogeneity of this tumor. Oh, that one didn't, there. So it really can run a range um, morphologically. Okay, so let's go in higher power. Well, the first thought I might have is I see mature fat of variable size, small, medium, and large adipocytes, dense sclerotic collagen, and large hyperchromatic pleomorphic cells. I mean, to me, that looks like well-differentiated liposarcoma, right? But I already told you MDM2 is negative by fish, and the vast majority of well-differentiated liposarcomas are MDM2 amplified, with the very rarest of exceptions. Um, and uh, so that is, I think, the most important thing to rule out is well-differentiated liposarcoma. Now, just we won't go deeply into liposarcoma, but um, I do have like an hour and a half long video of liposarcoma 101, so if you really need to know, that's your video. If you want to go to sleep, that also might be a, a place for you to start. But anyway, it's on YouTube. Um, it's got like a hundred and some pictures. So if you're like trying to picture match, can a liposarcoma look like this? Go check it out. The, um, the, uh, the, the name that we give for well-differentiated liposarcoma when it arises in the superficial soft tissues or when it arises anywhere on the extremities, we call it atypical lipomatous tumor, ALT. So well-differentiated liposarcoma and well different, I'm sorry, an atypical lipomatous tumor are the same thing. We just give a different name because of location, because there's a difference in prognosis in the superficial soft tissues or in the extremities. The behavior is excellent, the prognosis is very good, and usually they're cured by surgery. In the retroperitoneum, those tumors usually recur again and again, and over many years, the patients have a significant risk of dying from their disease eventually. But that's not what this tumor is, but it is important to be familiar with that, that tumor because it's the most important mimic to, to rule out here. But this tumor has areas that look like, like that, but as we look around, the other areas have some different findings. For one, look at these collagen bundles. The collagen in well-differentiated liposarcoma is usually very homogeneous, dense sclerotic collagen. But here we have these thick bundles, rope-like bundles, right? Similar to the collagen that you see in spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma. In spindle cell lipoma and pleomorphic lipoma, we recognize they are the same tumor. We just give them different names because of their morphology, but they are on a morphologic spectrum. They have the same behavior and the same molecular abnormality, which is uh, loss of, uh, or deletion of 13Q, chromosome 13Q, which is where the retinoblastoma gene resides, RB1. So by immunostaining, usually the majority of spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma have loss of nuclear RB1, or you can do FISH to show uh, monosomy, deletion of one copy. So in these areas, this really looks like pleomorphic lipoma. You have the ropey collagen bundles, mature fat, and the cells, even though they are very hyperchromatic and pleomorphic, look at the shape. They are wreath-like or florets-like, ring of atypical hyperchromatic nuclei. That is the very typical, or the very classic feature of pleomorphic lipoma. So why don't we just call this pleomorphic lipoma? Well, in the past, that's what I would have done. And in my training, that's what we did. We saw big things that looked like this, very ugly, but we just called them pleomorphic lipoma. Yes, it's 12 centimeters, but MDM2 is negative, it's pleomorphic lipoma. But but some people have come up with the idea that maybe these tumors deserve a different name. And so one of the, the name that's been proposed for this tumor is atypical pleomorphic 
lipomatous tumor. Now, you may not like that name, and I did not write the papers, and the people who wrote it are very good, excellent people, and I, I love their work and respect it. I do think the name is confusing, as are many names in soft tissue pathology. If you find them frustrating, you're not alone. They are confusing because they all sound alike. If you take lipo, mixo, fibro, and oma, and maybe put the word atypical in, and then mix and match in different ways, and then it's that soft tissue pathology right there. It's much like French, right? Je veux, tu veux, il veut. They're spelled different, they sound the same. It's très difficile. All right. Um, okay. So to me, the, the authors who have proposed this terminology, some of them have suggested that these are different than pleomorphic and spinal cell lipoma, whereas others have recognized that maybe they exist on a spectrum. I personally believe these truly are the same thing. They have loss of RB1. They um, uh, behave in a benign fashion, maybe rarely can recur, but they do not metastasize. And as far as we know, they have no risk of de-differentiating into high-grade sarcoma. So the key to me is just to recognize whatever name you call this, this is basically the upper end of the spectrum of atypia and size that you can see in pleomorphic lipoma. And on a similar note, you can have ones that are spindled and look like spindle cell lipoma without the pleomorphic fluoret cells, but are very large. They can have mitoses, sometimes even atypical mitoses. They can have lipoblasts. So that is, it is a, I understand why people use a different name because they look like really, really scary pleomorphic or spindle cell lipoma. But to me, they are more or less the same thing. Probably on these larger ones, I think excising them with the negative margin may be a good idea. But otherwise, for regular spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma, I tell the surgeons, these are benign. You don't need to do anything else. Simple excision is curative. On these big ones, if they're scary enough that I use the name, then I tell them, excise, but it's going to be OK. Um, but in any case, that is what this entity has been proposed as. And it is included in the new fifth edition WHO soft tissue tumor book, which is why I want to make you aware of it. So in any case, that is uh, what we're dealing with um, here. And I think it is, it's good to know that you can have pleomorphic lipoma that, or what atypical pleomorphic lipomatous tumor that is this atypical. So I don't use that terminology often, but I have used it a few times. And this was one, because this was, I think, one of the first ones I saw that I thought, whoa, maybe it's a reasonable name, because it looks very much like well-differentiated liposarcoma in some areas. So I find the RB1 immunostain to be really helpful for these. It's usually going to show loss of staining in those large pleomorphic nuclei. It can be a little bit of a finicky stain to get to work. You need to make sure that your lab optimizes it so that the background, um, the background cells stain nicely to be able to tell that there's true loss. And in my experience, both for these and for spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma, the loss is not 100%. It's particularly the large cells, the majority of the large cells or the lesional spindle cells will have loss. And you'll see staining in the background blood vessels, OK? And my personal preference um, for MDM2 testing is to use fish. Um, some people like to use the immunostain, and that's OK. Um, but do recognize that the immunostain is not perfect. It can stain histiocyte nuclei particularly when there are uh, histiocytes in areas of fat necrosis, as often happen in many different fatty tumors. And so you can get false positive staining. So I think if you have MDM2 immunostain in your lab, but not fish, it's reasonable to use the MDM2 as a screening test. If it's totally negative, that's reassuring. But if it's positive, I would personally prefer to proceed to fish. I'm lucky that I have MDM2 fish in my laboratory. And so I just go straight to fish personally. And when I was in training, we did not have the immunostain. We just had fish. So all I've ever really known is fish. But I have seen multiple consult cases that had MDM2 positive staining in tumors that were not well-differentiated liposarcoma. And that has made me quite hesitant to use the stain. So, But I know some very good um, soft tissue pathologists, like uh, Dr. Elizabeth Montgomery. Um, we wrote a book together, and she said she really likes using the stain. So. I'm, not everyone has the same view as me in that way. 
And like spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma, you'll often find CD34 expression in this tumor, and you can sometimes see a little bit of Desmond expression uh, too. Because remember, myofibroblastoma, mammary myofibroblastoma is related to spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma and has a lot of Desmond expression. So sometimes you'll see some Desmond expression in spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma, okay? You can be helped be with the immunohistochemistry with H and GA2 mm -hmm. because it, it's often positive in uh, lipoma and uh, atypical lipos um, adipocytic tumor and it's negative ah. in uh, pleomorphic and lipoma or atypical pleomorphic lipoma. Okay. And it, it's not positive in the astrocyte um, and effectively uh, MDM2 can be uh, um, uh, falsely positive in the estiocyte, but not HMTH. So um, Agnes just told me something really interesting. Yes, it's, a, it, it, it's, a, it's a very um, French use. Yeah. French use. Yes. I like that. You, yes. you can sell it on that if you say, <laughs> this is the French way. Um, 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 then people say, oh, <laughs> you're getting that in our lab now. And moreover, you should write a paper. That would be awesome. It's, it's, um, it's a use that I uh, learned with Jean-Michel. With Jean-Michel. And, and, and uh, not everybody in French use it. Okay. But uh, um, I use it. So I'm going to repeat your comments. So Agnès um, Nuvia said that one stain that if you have it available, you could consider using is HMGA2, which is positive usually in lipomas and well-differentiated liposarcoma, but is negative in spindle cell and pleomorphic lipoma, and presumably in this atypical end of that spectrum, and that it does not have the problems of staining of histiocytes in fat necrosis. So I, to my knowledge, I don't think we have that in my lab, but that sounds really cool, and I would like to try it out now. Because uh, the, the immunohistochemistry for IBA1 is, is sometimes difficult to interpret and uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, I, I use uh, for this for that uh, in mm. HMG. Well, that's awesome. This is uh, I'm learning so much. The French method too. I like that. <laughs> the French lipomatous tumor approach. Well, Jean-Michel Condra is uh, obviously a legend in soft tissue pathology, and and uh, like uh, Anya said, that that's we met at a meal where Dr. Weiss and Dr. Quandra went for dinner, and we were lucky enough to tag along with the, the greats, you know, and uh, what an amazing experience. And uh, uh, Sharon Weiss, who I look up to with the, the greatest of respect, always spoke with glowing terms about Jean-Michel, and I thought, well, if Dr. Weiss thinks he's good, he must be really good. And everything I've ever known of him or read from him uh, has proven that to be the case. So that's when I learned early on, the French know what they're doing when it comes to pathology, right? Very good. Uh, any questions about this um, tumor? I, I wish we did a better job with naming things in soft tissue pathology. It's very confusing, especially when we have to explain this to surgeons and treating doctors. It's hard enough for us to understand our own terminology and then to tell people, well, I know this sounds like a fake uh, made up name that I just invented descriptively, but it's actually a proper name. And so I, um, I have some, I think I have a sample um, pathology report in the handout that you can see some ways that I, the language I've used. And my goal is eventually to, I have thousands of these saved from over the years. My goal is eventually to release all of them onto the internet um, so people can use them um, and save some time in the way that they, I mean, I spent all this time thinking, typing, deleting, and then after 30 minutes of time, I'm like, ah, there's the report. It's like three sentences long. And then I'm like, I'm just, and then you just feel so like demoralized. Like I should be better by now. I can't believe I wasted 30 minutes. So I'm like, I'm going to get my time back. I'll save that and I'll put it on Twitter or on the internet somewhere so someone else can save some time in their day. So let me help you with that time I've already used up. Okay.